In a recent video I made, I mentioned that large herbivores can be very dangerous, and in particular, I mentioned hippos, which are estimated to kill hundreds of people a year, and some estimates even go into the thousands. Some comments took issue with that, not with the danger or the estimated number of deaths, but with the classification of herbivore with some saying that hippos are actually omnivores. Now I have to say it's not completely uncommon to find a herbivore that will occasionally eat animal matter. It has often been said that it's difficult to find a strict herbivore in the animal kingdom. In fact, a question posed to UC Santa Barbara got an answer that said pretty much that, stating, quote, with very few exceptions, except for maybe a koala, there are no other strictly herbivores. Although those animals do not hunt, they will eat meat when the opportunity presents itself. Those opportunistic carnivores include pandas, deer, cows, goats, chickens, ducks. There are video recordings, reports from hunters, and yes, even research articles about some deer eating other animals like a 2009 article in the journal Zoology on the predation on ground-nesting seabirds by island populations of red deer. Suffice to say, I thought I would find similar results with hippos. A few observed eating small birds here and there, maybe the odd scavenging event, but it's probably not much more than that. It's not like they're going to go out and hunt large animals to eat, right? Well, actually, let's take a look at that. There seems to be two distinct species, the pygmy hippo, that's been doing the rounds on the internet, and the common hippopotamus, which has five subspecies. And that one, the common hippo, is what we're looking at. Now firstly, it seems obvious that hippos are already considered herbivores, or mega herbivores. But don't just take my word for it, in the African Wildlife Foundation, the WWF, International Animals, as well as books like The Kingdom Field Guide to Mammals of Africa, describes their diet as consisting of a variety of different grasses. So what's the problem? Where's the contention? Well, some of the more notable research in more recent times comes from researcher Joseph P. Dudley, who in 1998 published an article in the South African Journal of Wildlife titled Reports of Carnivory by the Common Hippo, Hippopotamus Amphibious. The article describes the quote, first known observations of carnivory by hippos recorded in Hwangi National Park, Zimbabwe in 1995, and it's pretty wild. There were a group of eight hippos in a small body of water at the Masuma Dam in the north of Hwangi National Park. An adult impala ram that was trying to escape from an African wild dog entered the water and tried to swim away to safety. But one of the hippos, a large male, killed the impala. He then left the impala carcass to float on the water, or at least he did for a little while, but then he returned and fed on the carcass for 10 minutes. After that, he left the carcass and the other hippos came over and started communal feeding. The article also talks about how a few months later, about 65 kilometers or 40 miles south of the dam, a sub-adult hippo was observed ripping a piece of an impala carcass away from two Nile crocodiles. These are certainly peculiar events, and even Mr. Dudley remarks about how hippos had been known to be territorial and aggressive, but there hadn't been any recorded accounts of carnivory before these incidents. But a few odd occurrences in the 90s don't exactly shift our understanding completely. So do we have more instances since then? Well, we certainly do. Jumping forward in time to 2015, we get another research paper published in Mammal Review. Again, the biologist Dr. Joseph P. Dudley led the research along with a group of other researchers. While Dudley and his team do state that hippos are, quote, typically regarded as obligate herbivores and short grass grazing specialists, he also states that field studies have demonstrated that hippos are facultative carnivores that consume flesh and intestinal tissues from the carcasses of other animals. Now you might be wondering, what is a facultative carnivore? 
According to LibreTex Biology, facultative carnivores can eat meat as well as plant material, while obligate carnivores can eat meat all the time. And it also states that there is no clear line that differentiates facultative carnivores from omnivores. Dogs could be considered facultative carnivores. On other biology sites, I've read that the difference is that the facultative carnivore does best on a carnivorous diet, but can survive, though not thrive, on a non-carnivorous one. Which, I mean, that doesn't sound right. I was skeptical that they were closer to omnivores on the spectrum, but now they're leaning closer towards carnivores? Surely not. I mean, I think a logical question to ask would be how rare are these observations of carnivory? Are they really that widespread? Is it just a few individuals? Well, apparently, no, it is more than a few individuals, and yes, it is widespread. Again, to quote the paper, carnivory by hippos is not an aberrant behavior restricted to particular individuals in certain localities, but a behavior pattern that occurs within populations distributed in most of the hippos' current range in eastern and southern Africa. But how is this possible? How did we miss this? How did we not notice until a few incidents in the 90s? Well, take a guess. It seems that hippos are actually most active at night, not just according to this paper, but also in a variety of safari guides, like at St. Lucia, South Africa, and African bush camps. So perhaps because these meat-eating activities happened mostly at night, it was difficult for researchers or even just observers to see these cases happening. Still odd though, as hippos are adapted to graze well, and it would seem that they have the digestive system for plant matter. But Dudley suggests that what might be holding back other herbivores from consuming more meat is actually their physicality and physiology are, quote, biomechanical limitations rather than their digestive system. Hippos, however, don't really have that problem and generally seem to be pretty good at killing other animals. Quote, due to its large body size and unusual mouth and dental configurations, the hippo may represent an extreme case in which the predation and scavenging of large mammals by an ungulate species is not constrained by biomechanical factors. I do wonder about that impala back in Zimbabwe in the 90s. The fact that the hippo killed the animal and then came back to eat it later. I wonder if the hippo even considered it as a potential source of food when it first attacked, or if for hippos it's kill first, consider the menu later. The other thing we might want to consider is the consequences to this increased meat diet. The 2015 paper also talked about how this may make hippos more susceptible to anthrax and some other diseases. As it states, hippo mortality from anthrax may be orders of magnitude higher than those of other anthrax susceptible ungulate populations. So maybe it's not so great for the hippos that they're eating more meat. Anyway, where does that leave us in terms of the question, are hippos really herbivores? Well, I do want to pump the brakes a little bit. Even in this paper, it makes note of how hippos are adapted to consuming and digesting a large amount of plant material. Throughout the recorded history, hippos have mostly been observed eating plant matter, and most zoos I've looked at state they feed hippos a variety of herbivore pellets, grasses, including hay, and they are healthy hippos, or at least they seem to be. Another thing I think we should also consider is that in the original paper, in the 90s, it was speculated that a recent drought may have caused the hippos to be more desperate for food. Temperatures have only gone up since then, and droughts in Eastern Africa have become more common and more severe, so perhaps that is a contributing factor, though I'm not sure. It may be that our understanding of the hippo's diet is changing over time, or that their diets are just changing over time. The relatively newer research does put a bit of a spanner into the works, and it's something that definitely should be considered greatly. 
but I still like the idea that this should be graded on sort of a spectrum. Now, if we should put the hippo closer to herbivore or omnivore or carnivore apparently, I'm not 100% sure and it obviously wouldn't be up to some weirdo on YouTube to decide, but I still do lean towards herbivore. But what about you? Where do you think the hippo should go? Anyway, thank you to my members and my patrons and thank you so much for watching.